It's the 53rd Super League meeting of Huddersfield and Castleford, and one we hope will heat up your Friday night as this pair prepare to do battle in freezing conditions in West Yorkshire. Plenty to play for as the Tigers look to end a tumultuous start to their winless season that has also cost them a coach. Well, the plight of the visitors will not occupy much of Giants coach Ian Watson's thoughts as he looks to get what he has described as an at times clunky attack firing. So changes to the team that squeezed past Wakefield last weekend. A hamstring injury has ruled Jermaine McGilvery out. Ash Golding comes onto the wing for his first start this year. And with Will Price starting on the bench, Ollie Russell makes his first appearance of 2023, as does Jack Ashworth, with Owen Trout missing out. Well, Castleford have played and lost three and parted ways with coach Lee Radford. Andy Last is now in interim charge and has presided over a raft of changes, many enforced. First Super League appearances of the year for Alex Sutcliffe, Daniel Smith, one of five former Giants in this 17, and Jason Gary Gary, who replaces Beretta Ferraimo on the wing. There's no Paul McShane, so George Lawler deputises in the hooking role alongside Suaia Matangi, who makes just his second Tiger start in 12 months. Well, the visitors are without a doubt up against it tonight. The Giants favoured to claim their second win of the season and possibly push the Tigers' bottom of the table by close of play tonight. If that happens, Ollie Russell will surely have had a big say as he looks to build on an oppressive 2022. But Huddersfield beware. Jason Gary Gary has made a habit of scoring spectacular tries when the Sky Sports cameras are trained on him. We are minutes away from kickoff. Prediction time, John Wilkins, Sam Tompkins, who wins this? The Giants are going to trample over the Tigers tonight, Brian. I believe that Castleford are going to come out full of energy, nothing to lose, inspired by a coach change and get the win. Well, will the Giants feel a backlash from the wounded Tigers? Or can Huddersfield hit their straps and pile more pressure on already compressed Castleford? Welcome out the sides and we welcome the brave souls that have made their way precariously, I would imagine, to Huddersfield. It is freezing cold in the John Smith Stadium. Let's hope we have the action to heat us all up, including our commentary team who are standing by. We welcome Jody Cunningham, Barry McDermott and say good evening to Bill Arthur. Thanks, Brian, and fair play to those Welsh supporters of the Huddersfield Giants who've made the journey this evening. It has been a turbulent week for the Tigers with the Castleford Club parting company with coach Lee Radford after just three games of what would have been his second season. They come here with Andy last in charge and he'll be hoping to guide them to their first win of the new campaign. They're up against a Huddersfield side who got off the mark in their last game but are seeking a big improvement tonight. Tom Grant is the referee here tonight. The Casaford Tigers will get us underway. Barry, are we going to see the sack the coach bounce here tonight? Well, the Casaford Tigers have everything to gain, but they're up against a very stubborn, a very determined Huddersfield Giants side, who themselves are searching for a resounding victory. Ian Watson talked about the cohesion he wants from his spine players, and Casaford Tigers, Andy Last, talked about his side's belief in the process and the system. Yeah, I think this is going to be an interesting one. You've got one of the teams that everyone's banking and being up there, contesting for trophies in the Huddersfield Giants, and then another team that's looking at the opposite fortune of being one that everyone's banking to be at the bottom of the table. So it's going to be a really interesting one to see what we get tonight. Well, Casford Tigers second bottom at the moment after their shaky start to the season and hoping that they can turn things around here tonight. But they're up against the Huddersfield side who weren't at their most fluent last time out. They're looking a bit more fluent already here this evening. They did beat Wakefield, but only eight points nearly. And Watson looking for a bit more slickness in attack. And are we going to see that straight away? As Lola here stabs a little kick in. Gary Gary chasing back and just managing to deal with the situation. 
just in the nick of time. Great kick from Tuilola here. Well, what a first set of six from Huddersfield Giants. Nathan Peets began that momentum, and it's a beautiful kick, tantalising near that sideline. Here's Nathan Peets, gets out from nine, finds his halfback, and then the ability to keep his feet by Jake Bibby meant that the retreating defenders were nowhere near. And Ian Watson talks about Ollie Russell and what he will add to the side. It just becomes a little bit more cohesive, a little bit more fluid when that young man is complimenting Theo Farge. First appearance of the season for Ollie Russell. And here come the Giants again with Chris Hill. 35 years of age, his second season with the club, still making a big impact. Nathan Peets, here is Yates, and Yates driving it towards the line until he runs into the arms of Lawler, Massey, Kenny Edwards there as well. Nathan Peets, Farge, Lola Hare, short path, Eason Masters, and went forward. Yeah, it was to Lola here and Masters. Obviously trying to find the right combination over hot on this left edge. I think the pass out the back to the back row at Josh Jones was probably the better pass. Yeah, it's unfortunate that was a really great starting set from Huddersfield. It's exactly what you'd want. A little half break there from Bibby and then finishing in a corner with a repeat set. It's unfortunate they didn't make points out of that. I think Castleford will be counting themselves lucky there. Yeah, let off for the uh, the Castleford Tigers early on here at the John Smith Stadium. Not many have braved this chilly night. But a good contingent from... The Castleford Club, or su supporting the Castleford Club, two. are Billy here tonight. Finish. Well done, them. Bill, you can see the intentions of Castleford Tigers. They've actually named George Lawler. Began his career as a utility forward, a sometimes nine. But Andy Lester said, I want big men. I want to be nice and tight and hard to break down in the middle. But no Paul McShane, which is a, a big loss. Here is Kenny Edwards, once of the Huddersfield Club in the 20, 21 period there is Lawler here is Jacob Miller Miller making room to put the kick into Cudjo's corner nice intensity there we saw as well putting real pressure on on the kick there and it just meant that Miller had to take a little step back didn't quite get the kick exactly where he wanted so it's a good take and then Huddersfield starting the set as they want to again on the front foot Eason Masters there major close season signing playing the ball the uh, cook island international played in the uh, world cup for the cook islands in all their appearances and Pete goes again from a lee and toulouse hooker to ilola Haya kicks into open space and across comes Jack Broadbent operating at fullback tonight. And that's a great spot for him. I think he's been one of the shining lights in the games that Castleford have played. And Andy Last said the three games they've played they haven't been that far off. They only just lost against Hull FC. It was a poor start from Cass against Hull FC. St. Helens, well, nobody knew what St. Helens were going to turn up the week after the World Club Challenge. And then last week at half time against Wigan, it was only 6 0. And the bright star, the top performer throughout those games has been Jack. Robert. So I think we'll see him with his hands on the ball to be able to express himself. And I think we're in for a good game from Jack Robert. There's Lawler. Now then, here's Suerman Tangy. Another former Giants player made 50 appearances for the club. Miller launches a high, high kick and Golding is underneath this securely. It was a good point that the lads in the studio made. Sam Tompkins and John Wilkin talked about. J Jermaine McGilvery not being there, he's fundamental at the back end or at the start of the sets. The first three carries where the momentum is gathered. So Ashton Golding, Leroy Kudjo and the rest of that back five have to work extra hard. Yeah, and Barry, it's not just that, is it? It's Kevin Nagama, who's another one who's brilliant at that backfield play, getting them out of yardage. So I think, you know, we can talk about some of the losses that Castleford have got there with injuries in Avalds and, and uh, McShane there, which is obviously a big Oof. loss, but Huddersfield have got their fair share as well. Here is Jake Bibby now. Golding steps inside or tries to step inside away from Miller, but Miller comes back to make the tackle, assisted by Kenny Edwards. Farge now. Luke Yates just turned 28. Five, 
by Kenny Buck. And always oh, at the forefront for whoever he's playing for, Luke Yates. That's been the story of his British career, really. Wilson, Wilson, and the kick right. is a high, high one. Gary Gary is underneath it, climbs, Surrender. does well under pressure there. Does really well there, Bill. There was a lot of pressure there. Really good kick chase from Huddersfield. So much pressure on him and a great take there early on in the game. Two, move! Climb in, hold. Hold! Plenty of action elsewhere here uh, tonight, and Saints have just nudged ahead against the Lee Leopards, the Lee Sports Village. Here is Mahe Fanua now. Tapau was the pre-match warm-up. Right, Bill, I know you're old enough to remember Tapau. Geordie probably isn't. <laughs> no, a bit before me, that. Release Nathan Pat, Josh! Come on, Josh! Here's Nathan Massey playing the ball. And nice kick. 40-20. That's a great kick, isn't it? It is a 40-20. And Widdop making his mark early on. Well, he needs to stand up tonight. Jacob Miller, a new addition from Wakefield Trinity, of course, but I think he hasn't quite been anywhere near his best, Gareth Widdop. He needs to stand up, needs to get stuck in and lead his side from the front. So a big opportunity for the Castleford Tigers after soaking up a bit of early pressure from the Huddersfield Giants. Now here's Joe Westerman getting the Castleford Tigers on the front foot now. Set restart signalled. Big opportunity this. Lawler signalling for a quicker play the ball. Miller with a little step. Miller again! And Jacob Miller just short of the line. Cass fans thought he'd managed to get over, but he was just short, but he almost bamboozled his way through there. Westerman on it goes to Widdop. He turns, comes back across the field, then finds the pass. Lawler trying to Lawler trying to go on his own and does so! And he does so! George Lawler! We said he was versatile. We said he could bring something to this cast side. And he's brought the first try of the game. Well, that is a turn up for the books. You probably would not have put George Lawley down as the first try. He would. No, but they've done the defence. They've repelled the home side under some pressure. It was a magnificent kick from Gareth Widdop. Gave his side the field position. And even though it wasn't perfect, look at the run here from Nathan Massey on Oliver Wilson. Only has eyes for the big man. Just forgets what he's doing. And if we're being honest, those two players should have done better. Nathan Peets and Theo Farge, probably a bigger, stronger man, but you've got to make your tackles, especially that close to the line. First try of his season for George Lawler, who's had a good first season at the Castleford Tigers following his move from uh, Hull KR last year. And he is, he can play in so many positions. He's already this season been at prop, he's been at loose forward, he's been on the bench. And now he's starting tonight in that hooking role, and he's got the first try of the game, and Gareth Widdop has converted, and the Castleford Tigers, the side coming here, seeking their first win of the season, lead by six points to nil. Let's go down to the sideline. John Wells on duty down there this evening. Yep, good evening, Bill. The Tigers have started hot, haven't they? I'm going to give you a very, very local weather report. The headline, it's cold. It is minus one here at pitch side, but in contrast to last night over at the DW Stadium, it's clear, it's conducive to more open rugby. It looks like a really, really fast track. Huddersfield Giants will have to warm up a little bit to face the, the start the Tigers have, though. Thanks, John. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a good start from this Castleford side. Withstood what Huddersfield threw at them early on, and have then hit back. The Castleford side played three, lost three, lost their coach, and hoping 
to get their season underway here this evening. Look, Ian Watson before the game spoke so much about defence and how much he prides the defensive efforts of his team, particularly in the previous game against Wakefield, which wasn't the prettiest of games. And I think he'll be really disappointed with how they've defended in these opening minutes of the game. I think there was a little bit of a teaser there with Jacob Miller earlier in the set where they scored that try, where around the rock just really poor defence and they opened them up a little bit. They didn't fix it up and fantastic try to take advantage of that. Huddersfield are really going to have to sharpen up that defence around that rock area if they want to get something out of this game. Gasserford have already beaten Huddersfield this season. It was in a pre-season testimonial game for uh, Nathan Massey, the Tigers veteran, but Cass won 48 points to 10 on that occasion. Beretta Faraimo scoring a, a hat-trick for the Gasserford Tigers. They played quick, they played fast and controlled the ruck speed, and that's something Jordis talked about, whether you're running with the ball or you're making your tackles. If you can control that pace and that speed, you can get back and organise. Russell with the click at uh, the kick. Broadbent underneath it. Jack Broadbent in this fullback role. There's no Niall Evolds. Miller directing operations. Jacob Miller. Just inside their own 40. As Eden played the ball. Westerman. Move, ten meters, Casper Tigers fans applauding his effort there. Miller. With a little dink over the top into some open space. Across comes Lola Hay. Looks over his shoulder. Sees Alex Miller arriving. Good kick, good chase. Another brilliant kick there from Widdup. You know, his performances have been questionable. Probably last year at Warrington and, and maybe at the start of the season. But you can't question his kicking ability. And we've seen two fantastic kicks already at the start of this game. And if that's anything to go by, I think Widdup's in for a really cracking game tonight. Meanwhile, elsewhere. Hull Kingston Rovers are leading Warrington Wolves by six points to nil. Think it's cold here. Imagine, imagine what it must be like in East Hull tonight. Saints have gone further ahead against uh, Lee Leopards, eight points to nil. I was brought up, Bill. There's no such thing as bad weather, just poor choice of clothing. <laughs> just put a big coat on <laughs> and some gloves and an hat. First penalty of the game. Well, Will Price has come onto the field early. And that's what he does, he, he scares defenders, they're trying to, again, control that speed of the rook, control the speed of the play of the ball, and Kenny Edwards, who spent some time here at Huddersfield Giants, gives the penalty away. Yeah, well, Will Price early on, let's go and get the news from John Wells. Yeah, really early, uh, forced rotation from Ian Watson's men, Teo has left the field, we're hearing it's a calf issue, straight down the tunnel to be assessed, there's a, a fair deal of concern here on the sidelines, Will Price gets an early introduction into this game. Yeah, Will Price been standoff in both the games so far for the Giants, but Ian Watson said before the game that he wanted uh, Ollie Russell out there to maybe provide a bit more direction. There he is, he's on the ball, Ollie Russell. A lot of responsibility on his shoulders. He's had his injury problems, Theo Farge, during his Huddersfield career, hasn't he? Pete, here is Price now. Price changes direction, and the direction was towards the posts, and Kasovic just got to him in the nick of time. Nathan Pete, McQueen! try and the Giants respond pretty, pretty rapidly and McQueen invited really to go through a big gap in the the uh, Casavan Tigers defense and McQueen needed no second invitation he got 17 tries last year Chris McQueen the Giants top try scorer and he's off the mark this season and you were talking about the, the Huddersfield defence that end. Cass will be asking questions that end, Jody. They will, absolutely. That defence was not strong enough and Cass will be disappointed there, but that was coming. If you look earlier on in the set where they didn't quite manage to complete it, Chris McQueen hit a really great line off the shoulder of Luke Yates. He goes again then with that really, really strong direct line and Cass will just do not know what to do. They get the numbers wrong and I think they'll be disappointed with that initial contact there. He should still get the body in front, still make some contact, but Chris McQueen, absolute quality there to hit that line and score an easy points there for Huddersfield. And Oliver Russell with this conversion to level the scores. Makes no mistakes, six points apiece. 
Chris McQueen, wonderful feet. Close to contact, Nathan Peets can't have sight of McQueen until he gets the ball in his hand. He has a short option, he has a long option. And Cast Tigers, much like Huddersfield Giants, will want to do better on the goal line defence. Chris McQueen has been a really good acquisition for the Huddersfield Giants since he came to the club from the NRL. Made the dream team last year. Did McQueen, he's in his fourth Huddersfield season now. Andy last talked about the experienced players within his ranks. Sometimes experience can be another name for old, but when you've got experienced players who really do lead from the front, when it's time to speak and say something, it's genuine and it's honest and it's useful. And when you do your work with your actions, it ends up looking like that. Who's Yates here is Chris Hill. As ever, no nonsense approach from Hill. Over 500 career appearances under his belt now. Here is Luke Yates. Referee calls hell just inside that Castleford 40, and the kick is hoisted by Russell. Gary, Gary, eyes on the ball. As Kudjo made the tackle. I don't think the timing of Eason Masters was up to scratch, but you could feel it, couldn't you? Gary, Gary, he didn't look convincing. That's the second time he's had to deal with a high bomb. Maybe the Giants will go back to that side. Making his first appearance of the, uh, the season. Jason Gary Gary and he hasn't scored a try yet we have no. 17 and a half minutes he's normally skinned the opposition <laughs> by now Brian said it before the game didn't it we've seen some worldies from him they're still up yet Bill we might get one oh cast Tigers and it's Kenny Edwards he's tried to get up play that ball quick and he had sufficient grip on it and he's let go of it and you can see the disappointment he knows as soon as he gets up to play that ball. And they're not just coach killers, are they? They're, when you're your teammate and you've worked hard, you've just conceded points, you want to complete that next set, and then you give away the ball like that, trying to rush the play of the rook. We said, we said earlier, didn't we, how, how important that is, and we need to make sure that that's cleaner if uh, Castleford want to get some points. Head and feed to the Huddersfield Giants then. Here is Jake Bibby making his second appearance for the Giants since his move from Wigan, reuniting him with uh, Ian Watson. His coach in successful days at Salford, Chris Hill. <laughs> Kenny Edwards clinging on to his ankle down low. Oh, and he's dropped it. And now. then Nathan Peets has come up with the error. Oh. Well, again, experienced players. No, Bill, not cold hands at all. That is a fundamental part of Chris Hill's game. He will be absolutely spewing with himself. He's got a bit of attention, and Kenny Edwards is a type of player that gets under the skin. He's probably thinking about things he shouldn't concern himself with instead of getting on with his job. And it was a, it was a focus of last night's game, doing the basics well. In conditions like this, it's imperative. Glowering. Giants coach Ian Watson underneath that uh, bobble hat. Out. So the Castleford Tigers off the hook there, really, after their error. Here is Alex Sutcliffe making his first appearance of the season for the Tigers. Nathan Massey, and Massey has lost that ball, and it's another knockoff. Well, Nathan Massey gets a bit of shoulder contact, a bit of physicality. I don't know whether he turns round to off or no, no, it's just a good shot. It seems like both sides are just trying to rush that play the ball a little bit. They're trying to get the advantage over the other side. And, you know, there are some good shots going in, but th those balls should be protected a lot more than that. The play the ball speed is important, but keeping all of the ball is of most importance. They need to really, really tidy that up. So a quarter of the game gone. The Giants get the ball back. It's six points apiece. Hull KR Warrington. Saints leading at Lee. Here it's six points apiece as well, but Huddersfield rumbling forward with Josh Jones. Now then, here's Chris Hill. And Liam Watts comes to meet him. 
determination written on his face what equaled by that of Chris Hill here is Nathan Peets Peets when it goes to Price Lola Heyer Ethan Masters now about 10 meters away from that Casava Tigers try line Russell Will Price shows the ball and Tui Lola Heyer puts the brakes on gets away from Miller but eventually gives the ball to Golding and Golding brought down has lost ground they're outside that Casaford 20 now and that's the fifth tackle kick coming from Russell again Jason Gary Gary is the target he is underneath it he claims it it might not be convincing but he hasn't put one down yeah you're right Bill you're right he's done all that's been asked of him and they are targeting him it does seem that every time they get to that last tackle that they're trying to put the ball up trying to maybe force an error in that corner but so far so good he's coming up with the goods there and because Ollie Russell has taken over the first choice kicker he's on that side he's a left footer I think Gary Gary's in for a busy night Here's Mahe Fanua. Got two tries in that pre-season thumping of Huddersfield by the Castleford Tigers. Did Mahe Fanua, Kenny Edwards now. His former club, the Catalan Dragons, already winners in round four after their victory at Wigan last night. Kudjo fields that widow kick inside his own 20 and begins the journey back towards Tiger territory. More news coming in from Lee and Saints 12-0 up now. Early on there. Just inside their own half of the Huddersfield Giants. Here is the Giants' top try scorer, Joe Greenwood. Two tries to his name. But he says he's not really that fussed about the try scoring. He's a Wallace. liar, Bill. He's a liar. <laughs> it's all about getting to the right position. It's all about scoring the tries. Offside. He's, he's had a good start to this year, given the number 10 shirt, given the responsibility of getting his team forward, and it was his charge and his quick play of the ball that led to that. Well, on a night maybe when points are going to be at a premium, the Giants have decided to go for goal, but his teammates are saying, no, let's, let's just keep it moving, let's yeah. keep moving. Even if it's just for the warmth, I think they want to keep <laughs> exactly. moving. <laughs> I don't think they've found the rhythm yet. And Ian Watson talked about his side being clunky, his attack being clunky, but he prides himself on his sides being difficult to break down, difficult to beat. I agree with you, Jordy. he'd be absolutely fuming with the way that George Lawler just strolled, just meandered his way over that try line. But it's about reset, nudge those two points and let's start again. Russell from distance, but it's not a problem for him. And uh, having been 6-0 down early on here, Huddersfield Giants edge their way into an eight points to six lead. Oliver Russell with that penalty. And Ian Watson will be promoting patience and discipline. And if that means taking two points on his opposite side, have come up with something and pause that opportunity, they'll do that all night. He's a big indicator, the number nine, Nathan Peace. When he's getting out, he's running from number nine, he's happy with the rook speed, and things tend to come off the back of that. He's been around since he came to the British game, or the French game as well, Nathan Peets. He's, he's been at Albi, Toulouse, Lee, the, the former Gold Coast player. There's a player down, meanwhile, and it's Alex Sutcliffe needing attention. We just saw there, Bill, in that previous play, how involved Luke Yates is getting in that in that backfield. He's the one that's organising and trying to take the forwards. He's hitting, he's playing off his middles, and then he's jumping in and, and getting in that rook, getting some quick play of the balls, making himself really busy in that backfield play for Huddersfield. Thoughtful Castleford Tigers coach Andy Last as Alex Sutcliffe gets attention. Good turnout for the uh, the Castleford Tigers from supporters who uh, have wrapped up well and made the journey. 
well done and to us as well, Bill. Talking the castle for Tigers supporters. Uh, just a, a message, a get well message to my friend Daryl, the Castle for Tigers supporter from uh, Nottinghamshire, who's getting over a, a bit of a, a health blip. And I uh, hope you're on the mend. I'm back on track like a Deltic diesel very soon. That's one for train spotters. Alex Sutcliffe leaving the field. Well, Alex Sutcliffe has put himself about, got his head in the wrong position there. He'll take a break. He did, he really got himself in the wrong position there, didn't he? Yeah. Here is Chris Hill. Talking of a Deltic diesel, he doesn't uh, hold back. Plenty of strength in those legs still. I thought the Giants were lucky to get away with that play of the ball. Carry, carry, just looks at his full back. Jack Broadbent said, Is it you? Is it me? And <laughs> in the end, yours. <laughs> yours. Yeah, you're right. He's unconventional with the way that he catches his, his high kicks, but he hasn't dropped one yet. We haven't seen, he's not going to get too many chances in the clear tonight. I don't think it's that type of game. It's, game, it's going to be middle channel, it's going to be hit, leg drive. Might come down to that kicking game. Adam Milner is on the pitch. There he is. And what a servant he has been to the Casford Tigers club. A one-club man for real, Milner is. In his 14th season. And this one, his 298th career appearance. Play on, play on, play on. It's a penalty. And Bill, I'm saying it's not going to be an expansive game, but one more pass to Gary Garrett. There was a little bit of open space there for him. And I presume that he's gone into the centre now, Alex Mellot. Has that versatility to play in the back row or out in the centre. He just wasn't confident with that first pass. Yeah, it looked like he was going to throw it, didn't it? And with that little bit of open pace, I think... Gary Gary might have made a little bit of something, but he, for me, for Castleford, it looks like they're trying to play a little bit more conservative, play in and around the rook, not try and ship it too much in the early phases of this game and try and complete, which obviously we've seen a few times where they've made those, those errors around the play of the ball. We just need to try and complete and then get the ball to Gareth Widdham to get us some good field position around the kick. Oh, that's a bad side, that, isn't it? Greenwood leaving the field, I think. Yeah, he gets up, his knee isn't right. You can see the wince on his face, he's uncomfortable, Ooh. but I felt... Remember me saying I wasn't happy with the play of the ball? When he got up, he was limping after that, after one of his carries. And they're going to have a look at him on the sideline. It'd be a big loss. So a bit of to-ing and fro-ing on the sidelines with the players leaving the field. We've... Theo Farge has gone off. Joe Greenwood has, has gone off. Who was the head knock? Hold, Alex Sutcliffe hold. off with a, a head knock. There's on? another player down. Play Liam Watts hobbling. And here's Nathan Massey still going. Three, He's another two, long Chris server. Back, back, back. His seventeenth Casavid Tigers season. Nathan Massey. Milner. Westerman. Run, oh, oh, run wow. around with Watts. McQueen trying to dribble the ball up fields. Didn't stick. Well, it's a hit and spin, and Liam Watts is trying to hit, hit, engage defenders, and just create a bit of space for his teammate. But if he keeps hold of that ball, he's one on one with Oliver Wilson. No personal, mate. No personal. Never is. Yeah, they just needed so that it, pass to stick, didn't they? There, and I think there was a bit of space for Westerman. I don't, not too sure whether he was expecting it. I think he tripped a little bit as he was trying to take that ball. And yeah, they just needed to keep hold of that and take some of the field position they've not had for a while. Busy time on the sidelines. Let's rejoin John. Yeah, you're not kidding, Bill. Very busy for the physios and the doctors. T.O. Farr is just an update. There is no update. He's still being assessed by the, the main doctor here, the Huddersfield Giants. Uh, meanwhile, Joe Greenwood uh, looks... Oh, it's, it's a, obviously, it's a, a knee issue there that he's got. They think a twist rather than anything else. He's being assessed as well. What's his good? Meanwhile, here is Matty English. And taking the Giants up towards the halfway line. Nathan Peets gets the pass away to Luke Yates, who is really durable, Luke Yates, where all others are picking up bangs and bruises. He just seems to keep going. He is made of granite, Bill. He defends for his life, he carries the ball forward, and he's such an imposing figure with his physicality and his mentality. 
he'd get in any side in the game. Him. He leads from the front, doesn't he? He really sets the example from backfield right through. I think he's just an absolute stalwart of this Huddersfield Cass. side. Right, Tom Grant bringing him back for the knock-on. That was a kick that uh, Castleford Tigers didn't manage to deal with. Well, the fullbacks overcalled that, as he should. He's got full sight of it. We're looking at Gary Garrett, and that's the place and the spot where Ollie Russell has put kick after kick after kick. They haven't dealt with it. It could have been a goal line dropout, but there's a knock on in there somewhere. Credit to the kick chase, though. Huddersfield putting a lot of pressure on that catch, and it's inevitable that one of them's going to get put down with the pressure and the kick chase that could Joe there putting on that catch. So head and feed to Huddersfield Giants, 10 metres away from the Castleford Tigers line. They lead by eight points to six, and it's with Price. And Price, immediately from the scrum, makes an impact. And it was so simple for Will Price. Started off on the bench, Farge's injury meant Price came on early in the proceedings, and he's made his mark with his first of the season. And Casava Tigers paying a, a heavy price for not dealing with the kick, really, it comes down to. But it was a, a kick that put them under pressure. It's a lovely set play, isn't it? And that balance and footwork that Will Price is blessed with. They just can't handle it, the Casper Tigers defenders. They're up quick, trying to shut them down. And Kenny Edwards, if anything, is chasing too hard loses his hips and you can see his face in the sideline there can't deal with the footwork and agility of will price but it was a, a wonderful kick from his halfback partner ollie russell and that's what they'll do all day the giants put pressure on their opponents and feed off those mistakes you got to try in round one in fact against warrington did will price so second of the season also kicked a couple of goals in that game but the goal kicking this evening is being handled by Oliver Russell. And the referees called time off. Back on. And Russell composes himself. The crowd settles down. And half time approaching. He extends the Huddersfield Giants' lead, 14 points to six. Yeah, I think Baggi right there. I think Kenny Edwards just tries to get out the scrum. He's trying to do the hard work and get there, get across to, to Price, who, when you see that, when you see that a defender has turned the hips and they're chasing hard, and you've got footwork like Will Price has, just that quick step inside, hand off to Broadbent, and then score under the post. Absolutely fantastic play from him, just instinctive half-back play. Will Price in his final season with the Huddersfield Club. He's off to uh, NRL next season with the Newcastle Knights. Big move for him. And will he sign off with a big season for Huddersfield? Just 20 years of age. That is a big move, isn't it? It is, but it worked for Dom Young, and it's something I'm sure he's thought about for a long time. There's opportunity for young players now to go over to the NRL. We wish we could keep hold of them, but that's our job, isn't it? To make our competition the place where everybody wants to play. Here is Jason Gary Gary now. His build-up to this first appearance of the season includes turning out for Midland Hurricanes in a, a lone game recently. Stand now! Go three. Jacob Miller. Mahe Fanua now. Tungan International offloads that. Nobody was expecting it. Miller was looking the other way. Just reacted in time and made something of it until Chris Hill gets a hold of him. You don't usually want an offload that close to your line, especially when you've just conceded points. But they've got to be alert, haven't they? You know Mahe Fanua is going to find an offload. Yeah, if you're Mahe Fanu, you're annoyed that there's not anyone there following up. You know the capability he has to get that hand free. These four defenders all around him, and he still manages to have that strong stance, get the hand free, and, and find that offload that luckily Miller managed to clean up and get some good yards for Castleford. Wire have turned it round at Hull KR. They were 6-0 down. They lead 
at the moment. Matty Nicholson, the latest try scorer. Huddersfield inside Castleford territories. Golding plays the ball. Jack Ashworth, the former Saint, a grand final winner in actual fact in his St Helens days. Here's Nathan Peets. There is Ashworth. Russell on the last. Puts the kick up. It ricochets off somebody. Was that off the Castleford Tigers, man? Oh, yeah, you're right. Castleford Tigers have touched that. Is it Gary Garrett? It's either Gary Garrett. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Well, the referees judge that Gary Gary's got a hand to it. I think I'd feel a little bit hard done to you there, Baz. I'm not too sure whether it was. It looked like it might have been Kudjo's hand that pulled that back, but, you know, Huddersfield aren't going to say no to that one. Gives him really good field position now to attack the cast line again. Yep. Only about seven metres or so away as Pete's with the pass to Russell. Russell delays it to Lola Heyer, but Lola Heyer asked the question, where am I supposed to go now? He didn't know whether there was an obstruction with that go runner going through. Probably did the right thing. Go to. Masters, Russell, back to Ashworth, and Ashworth, a big figure. Wrestling his way. Release now! Daniel Smith gets a hold of a leg. Short pass to Yates, and Yates is almost over. He's held just short. Crowd thought he was over. Quick play, the ball finds Price. Price stabs a little kick in. Lovely try for Bibby. Lovely try. Price has made an impact, or has he? Referee Tom Grant, for the first time this evening, is going to go to the video ref, Marcus Griffiths, to check that one. It's tackle four. We're checking onside, offside from the kick. So if we can stop it on the foot, please. OK, so they've got to have both feet behind the ball, and they have. Can we go through to the ground, please? OK, so he now needs to gain possession and ground the ball in the field of play. So he gains possession and the ball is grounded. I have a decision. If, all, if only they were always that easy and clear cut oh, for the Vizio ref. Love it, love it, love it, Bill. That's what I've come to see. Marcus Griffiths is going to award that try, confirm that try for Jake Bibby. What an impact. Will Price has had, he's scored a try, he's created a try now. Bibby getting his first try of the season. Jake Bibby, what an impact he's had in this Huddersfield side. You know, he's, he's familiar with Ian Watson, he, he knows what he gets out of him as a centre, but Will Price again, great vision, little step, takes it to the line, and I think there's a little bit of an indication there from McQueen to say, just put a little kick through, we're going to chase up, and we're going to get on that for you, and Bibby does just that. Gets right through the line, collects cleanly and gets the ball down. Really good play to make sure you're on side and following through the line there. Brilliant play from the Huddersfield side. And a great try for Bibby. Oliver Russell, 100% kicking records so far. <laughs> Until then. And you would have fancied him to land that one. But Jake Bibby, who has followed Ian Watson to Huddersfield getting his account underway for the season. Bill, do you know who I'm going to credit that try to? Luke Yates, who stumbles and staggers, resists the temptation. It would have been a double movement if he'd have gone for the try, but he didn't. He unselfishly played his ball. Will Price had space, he had skill, and he had a support runner in Jake Bibby. Down to the sideline, we can hear from Huddersfield Giants assistant coach Andy Kelly, who must be pretty pleased, pleased Andy, with the way... It wasn't the best of starts to the game, but you've certainly taken a grip on it now. Yeah, I wasn't best pleased with you praising uh, Ollie Russell's kick in there and then he missed one, but uh, that's, the, that's the biggest error, error we've had so far. No, I thought we got off to a real steady start, but what we were, what was happening through the middle, we were getting rolled by the, the Castleford pack. We saw we saw that in their lineup that they'd gone big across the middle and wanted to take us on, and I thought they got the better of the early exchanges. And what an impact from Will Price off the bench, Andy. Well, it was just a timely inclusion, Will Price, you know, with T.O. Farge going off and having Will Price on the bench. And he, he's obviously hungry and ready to go, and his impact so far has been massive for us. Thanks, Andy. 
Oh. Yes. So's this man's impact, Luke Yates. You're not going to make a dent in him, are you? Look at this. That's iron against iron, isn't it? That's Milner, and Milner is rock exactly. solid as well. Tui Lolahe, a very quick hands to Kuncho. Kuncho skipping past the first. It was Widdop who managed to stop his progress, but Huddersfield threatening again here. Here is Lola Heyer. Russell McQueen looking for a second. Kenny Edwards gets a hold of him, and then the referee will penalise Kenny Edwards. They'll take two here, won't they? That's the way they've approached the game. High tackle. Kenny Edwards. Yeah, there's no doubt about it, but... Isn't it interesting how deep they go when they're close to the line? They're not interested in getting flat and getting over the advantage line. They don't mind losing some metres to just try and distract and confuse the defenders. Only Russell just uh, having a moment and a chance to hear from John Wells. Yeah, it's all action down here on the sidelines. Castleford this time, we have an update on Alex Sutcliffe. He has failed his HIA, failed his HIA, so he will take no further part in this game. The Castleford Tigers down to 16 available men. The Huddersfield Giants working with 15 at the moment as Theo Farge continues to be assessed along with Joe Greenwood. Thanks, John. sure what the delay was for but Oliver Russell has got the kicking tee he's got this one lined up and I'm now not going to put the mockers on him this time are you going to back him or not I am no comment stick or twist no comment go on Bill I'm going to say he'll get it oh. easy left pegger right side simples just before half time and confirming that and giving Huddersfield Giants a 20 points to six lead as the half-time Hooter approaches yeah Huddersfield have now took control of this game haven't they They're a little bit rocky to start defense not quite as solid but we've seen them really step into this game now composure when it needs to happen taking the points when they need to and really getting hold of this half and he last with some talking to do with his team when they get back to the dressing room because they trail at half time by 20 points to six. Thank you very much, Bill Arthur. Yes, Castleford, plenty to contemplate as they trudge off here at the John Smith Stadium. Temperatures plummeting and their prospects of getting anything out of this game going the very same way. They brought Will Price off the bench, replacing the injured Teo Fage, and, well, the son of a gun, he has stepped up and delivered. Sensational footwork and a contribution to another Huddersfield Giants try. We'll analyse with John Wilkin and Sam Tompkins after this. Some would say the difference for the Brisbane Broncos this year is the influence of Lee Breers. He'd certainly say that himself. There's more NRL action for you on Sky Sports Arena, 8.30 a.m. You can see the Storm taking on the Canterbury Bulldogs, who have had a difficult start to a season that has promised much as they have rehauled, or overhauled, I should say, their roster and a new coach in Cameron Seraldo in place. Right, just a reminder of the scoreline here at the John Smith Stadium. It's a 20 points to six half-time lead for Ian Watson's Huddersfield Giants, Chris McQueen, and then the influential Will Price scoring one and setting one up for Jake Bibby. George Lawler had opened the scoring for the Castleford Tigers. Let's take you, gentlemen, back into the Castleford Tigers dressing room. A wonderful shot we picked up of Andy Last showing what a coach must do when a player yeah. has had a difficult 40 minutes. Yeah, a difficult 40 minutes for Kenny Edwards. Look, at Andy Last, part of your job as a coach is to, at half-time, pick your players up. Everybody has bad games. Kenny Edwards maybe not had his best 40 minutes. Andy Last trying to pick him up there. Is there any way back for Castleford? No. To Sam Tompkins? I don't believe so. OK, well, we will find out. Let's get back over to Jody Cunningham, Barry well, McDermott and Bill Arthur. Well, the Castleford Tigers might have other ideas and hopes that they can turn this around from a 20 points to six deficit at the resumption against a Huddersfield side who really have high hopes of 
achieving big things this season. They finished third on the 2022 table, and then their playoffs ended very swiftly at the hands of uh, the Salford Red Devils. But they had shown great signs towards the end of last season. 12 of 13 home weekly round matches were won here at the John Smith Stadium. And they're looking to make this a, a fortress again. And it's been, as the game has gone on, they've got more impressive. Well, Huddersfield have played the way that Ian Watson likes his sides to play. It's all about field position. It's all about possession. If we look at one of the stats that we picked up at halftime, play the balls in your opposition half. 34 occasions the Huddersfield Giants have done that for the Cast Tigers, who've only done it eight times. So they're restricting metres. And even though Cast Tigers have the ball, they're not doing enough with it. Yeah, Baz, and they're not just having more play the balls in the opposition's half, they're also completing more sets. We saw them complete twice as many sets, 18 to the Huddersfield Giants as opposed to nine Castleford Tigers. You've got to have hold of the ball. If you've not got the possession against this great Huddersfield side, you're not going to be in, in this game. And at the minute, Castleford Tigers are really struggling to hold Huddersfield. Kutcher letting that kick bounce towards his own line before he fields it and starts the Giants back on the offensive. Here is Eason Masters, who made his New Zealand debut against England in Denver back in 2018. I think that's when Ian Watson first noticed him. Impressive. Watson's bided his time, and when he's had the ability and the finances to go and get him, he has. Russell with the kick, but it's straight into the arms of Jason Gary Gary. And this time there weren't a posse of Huddersfield Giants players bearing down on him. And he brings the ball back up to that Castleford Tigers 40 meter line. Here is Alex Meller, another one of the former Giant contingent. He uh, made 79 appearances for the club. Miller. And it goes to Mahe Fanua. Oh, Fanua with the offload of Milner. Those fingertips tingling in the frost tonight just couldn't get a hold of it bill we said it in the first half you know mahe fanua is going to off the block offload the ball he's compulsive with that skill and when it comes off it's fantastic so expect it he's just thinking about what he's going to do adam milner there before he's got hold of the ball it's josh jones Closing on 300 career appearances, Jones, as he plays the ball. Back it comes to another former Saint, Jack Ashworth. But they can't get him down on the floor. They've not completed that tackle, and they've got a, a defender out the defensive line. Russell ball, McQueen. Quick hands from McQueen back to Will Price, but Price is wrapped up by the Castleford Tigers defenders. Four tackles gone. Can they withstand this latest assault? McQueen looking for a second and getting it. Chris McQueen made that look so easy, but he sold the dummy. The Tigers defence bought it. And Chris McQueen, in his fourth giant season, gets his second try of the night. And Huddersfield, they, they look very slick. This is what Ian Watson wanted, and they're turning it on tonight. They're just tightening up the pressure, aren't they? Whenever those mistakes come, it was a forced offload from Mahe Fanua, a knock-on from Adam Milner, and as soon as they got that ball, the breaking tackles, they're not able to be dominated in that play of the ball. Coaches talk about rook speed all the time. This is nice, slick hands, good recognition from McQueen who has spent some time in the three quarters, so he's done that. The muscle memory he has for that situation meant that he delivered it, he executed it, and it's four, potentially six points for the Giants. Lance Todd Trophy winner in defeat last year for the Giants against Wigan. As I said earlier on, he's been a tremendous acquisition for the Huddersfield club. And... Castleford Tigers looking dejected. behind their own try line 20, 24 points to six the kick to come from uh, Oliver Russell and this the trickiest one he's faced all night yes Barry, I back him. 
Barry reckons he's going to land this. He's, he's right. No! It was on target, just didn't have the legs. It looks close, is not it? He <laughs> nearly, nearly had it. Nearly. He probably deserved that one. I think Huddersfield have started just like they did that the end of that first half. Really dominant in attack. And it, it was all come from that offload, that forced offload in the error. But that line from McQueen and Bibby hitting inside, engaging those defenders and just opening up that space on the outside for McQueen. Just easy strolling, nice little dummy. And he deserved that one. I think he's worked really, really hard tonight. 24 points to six, the scoreline. Scott Morrell is part of the coaching staff at the Castleford Tigers these days. And how are you going to turn this one around, Scott? What what needs to be done? Just we just can't afford to turn the ball over in our own half. We just need to play, get set into his sets and kick tough and, and defend down their end. Because you've been your own worst enemy at times this evening, haven't you? Too many errors. And too, yeah, too many errors and too many penalties, mate. They're playing all the ball, uh, all the football down in our half, so. To turn this round now, we need to get the ball down in there half and score some points. Thanks, Scott. Cheers, mate. Sounds pretty straightforward, but Huddersfield Giants don't seem to be in the mood to let this slip. And that's a great kick. And Bibby was chasing for all he's worth, and Broadbent did well there because there were bodies all over the place. He kept his eye on the ball. A terrific decision to kick that ball, and everybody on the same page. It meant that it was a genuine contest and a stressful one at that if you're a Cast Tigers player. Intent and intensity, I think we're seeing from this Huddersfield side. Like you said, everybody there chasing that kick, all on the same page and putting pressure on one slight fumble at the back there. And it was probably another, another four points for Huddersfield. I don't, I'm really impressed with the energy they're now starting to bring into this game. Here is Milner, Westerman. Miller on it goes to uh, Kenny Edwards. His coach, Andy Last, just having a personal word with Edwards, we saw at half-time. And the ball back with Miller on the last. He gets the kick high, but doesn't get a great deal of distance no. on it. Chance to go downstairs and hear from John Wells again. Yeah, Bill, just a quick one. It doesn't look like they're going to need an awful lot because they're comfortable, the Huddersfield Giants, at the moment. But you can scratch Theo Fires and scratch Joe Greenwood. Both will play no farther part in this game. It's uh, Fires with a calf issue, Greenwood with an E issue. There he will sit the rest of the game out. Thanks, John. So it's been a pretty gruelling contest. Built two sides. Just to reinforce, the decision was a good one off that kick. Cast Tigers again kicked behind the 40-metre line. That's the reason the Giants are in such good field position now. And Ashworth with legs driving. Gets up to the 10-metre line from in the Castleford Tigers territory. Russell just managed to get hold of the ball and then almost found a way through. Price, sh shape to kick. Price still running. Price finds the gap. And Will Price, oh, he almost got that down. Or did he get that down for his second of the night? He did everything right. And more did Will Price. But when he came to the crunch, I think he lost possession. Marcus Griffiths. Will the, the video ref will have to adjudicate on this. Tom Grant says no try. So it's tackle four and we're checking the grounding, please. So at this point, he's in possession of the ball. Price is going to ground the ball and has appeared to have lost it. So we can confirm here. So we ask that at this point, catch hold and grip the ball to it to be a try. He doesn't do that. Thank you. I have a decision. Well, Jack Broad, Ben, has done his absolute best there, hasn't he? He's on course for a second try with Will Price, but that's going to be denied. No Couldn't try. keep a hold of that. And Marcus Griffiths, he's from the Ben Thaler School of Video Refing. Let's have a look. Let's Let's it's no. it done. Oh, look at this, though. Will Price, it's a big man's <laughs> nightmare, isn't it? Dan Smith, big Liam Watts there, can't handle his agility. And were it not for Jack Broadbent, just, just helping it on its way. Yes, he did rip it out. Yeah, you're supposed to keep hold of it, Pricey. Zero! But it was magical in the build-up. He shaped a kick, he sold the dummy, he had the pace. He just didn't have the finish. Huddersfield are offside. That's welcome news for the Castleford Tigers. Warrington just ahead at Hull KR 12-10. Good contest going on there again. The last one was uh, a one-pointer. 
Frankie on, Holton has got two tries in that Wait game. Leads 4-0 up against Wakefield. Trinity involved in another dower contest by the sound of things. Well, listen, going back to Warrington, this is a big result or a big game. They've got to get that fourth win. Everybody's saying, don't get carried away. They won three last year. If they can get a result at Hull KR, which is a difficult place to go, they're a step further to everybody thinking they are serious contenders. David Fussitua, try scorer for Leeds, giving them that 4-0 lead against Wakefield. Milner, can Casaford Tigers strike back? Here is... Joe Westerman and Westerman is wrapped up. Four. Move, find a four. In That's there. It. Hold it hold. Luke Yates, who usually features among the top tacklers in any, any game, is involved in. Little kick, and it's still in play. Boy, on, boy, on, boy, <laughs> Everybody's looking at the ball. Eventually, <laughs> it comes back, and Widow keeps four, it alive, boys. and they've done well there. Surrender. I'm not sure I've ever seen that one before, Bill. <laughs> I've seen it in the round ball game. Play on, play on, play on, play on. Little kick from Widdup and nice hands from Tui Lola. Just stooped to pick that one up. Nobody wanted it. Yeah, this is an unusual one, isn't it? My kids playing football in the playground. Yours. <laughs> And a nice pick up from Tui Lola here, who hasn't had a, a big involvement on this match. It's been the young kids, hasn't it? The young kids. Ollie Russell and Will Price commanding the ball, dictating the pace and tempo. Great to see. 50 minutes gone. Only 50 minutes. 24-6, the Huddersfield Giants lead. And that's the fourth tackle. Nathan Peets, Five and a field ball. just over the 40-meter line for the Giants. Russell, this time he goes low with the kick, and it sits up for Jack Broadbent. It's a good chase from Russell as well. Kick and lead. It's a wonderful habit to have. As I say, he's absolutely thriving now. Theo Farge isn't on the pitch. He's the main steer of the ship. Ollie Russell. Making the most of his first opportunity of 2023. Three, three, Greg Eden trying to get something going for the Council of Tigers. Hasn't uh, had a very busy night. Greg Eden hasn't seen a lot of the ball. Oh, Lola, who's try oh, set things just going. Just Listen, just Bill, they're not good signs then. Tackle three with 51 minutes on the clock. And that ball goes in front of a few players, 20 metres and bounces on the floor. Here's Mahe Fanua now. McQueen with the tackle on Fanua. Stand, goal five. Widdup. Jacob you Miller. Kenny Liam Watts. With the kick. Lola Heyer. Pouches that ball. One. Move down. Brings it back to the 30 metre line in Huddersfield territory. Here is Leroy Cudjo. We get to learn a bit about these two sides. Casford Tigers, what are we going to see? They're behind on the scoreboard. People questioning inside and outside where the character and team spirit is. And for the Huddersfield Giants, in front on the scoreboard, doesn't look and appear like Cast Tigers are going to come back into it. So how do they handle the last phase of this game? Lola Heyer. Here is Isan Masters. Liam Watts. Widdup Milner. But they don't get into ground again. Peets, the ball over the top to Russell. Russell on to the veteran Kudjo. Kudjo stabs a lovely kick in. Oh, oh, what a try! Tui Lola Heyer, what a kick that was! Lola Heyer on the end of it. Kudjo and Lola Heyer celebrate. Leroy Kudjo, his 340th Giants appearance. But what a delicate touch that was and what superb hands from Tui Lola Heyer. We saw them at the other end of the field where he scooped that kick up and then there he was again, just making it look so easy. You called it there, Barry. He's not putting the place to ground and Masters does so well there to stand up, get a quick play. Nathan Peach jumps out there from the dummy half position, takes players with him, finds a pass and Russell does really well there to engage into his winger. Kudjo there, seasoned professional, puts a brilliant little kick in. 
And who else but Lola here to jump on that one? You said he was having a quiet game there, Baz. I'm not too sure he is now. Well, that was an absolutely fantastic team try there from Huddersfield. Lots of hands and lots of players involved with that one. Said he had a quiet game, Jordy. A quiet game. Doesn't mean he's not going to inject himself, <laughs> as is his wanton wish. Will Price just getting a word or two from Ian Watson. How to keep the pressure on the Casaford Tigers. Well, the coach said before the game that he wanted to see better attack from his side. He's got his wish tonight. Yeah, Bill, completely agree with you. I think, especially this sort of second half, second half of the first half, and then so far in the first 15 minutes of, of this second half, we've seen really impressive play, play from Huddersfield. Everybody getting involved and getting hands on the ball, just real intent and intensity going forward. Russell back on target, 30 points to six. Well, that's a good example of detail, not getting it right in terms of the Casper Tigers, not getting the player down to the ground, and the detail of Nathan Peets jumping onto the short side, finding a pass to Russell, who finds the player in space, and it's a lovely kick and a lovely try for the Giants. Tongas, Tui Lola here. Increasing Huddersfield's lead with the addition of Oliver Russell's conversion. 30 points to six. The scoreline here and the Casper Tigers heading for another defeat. Played three, lost three so far this season. And Huddersfield's heading for back-to-back -back victories. Let's go back to the sidelines, John Wells. Yeah, if you doorstep a coach often enough, sometimes he'll give you some easy information. So I asked Ian Watson mm. what he'd said to uh, to Will Price. He said, look, we, we got away from things in that set, moving far too lateral, four tackles, 10 metres made. So it was a message to his halfback to direct the players up the middle. They're going to get an awful lot of joy, he says. More direct, more results. Kevin Nagama in the background there. They'll be keen to get him back in action. Jake Connor, likewise, they'll want him on the field soon. Hold me, hold me, hold me. Will the Huddersfield Giants? But the mood that they're in the Giants now, they can afford to wait until that time is right. They're not under pressure. And those spine players, those key players, are so important. If you think about the way that Lola here, Russell, Nathan Peets and Will Price as he come onto the field, how they've performed. It's been right in the thick of how the Giants have performed. Compare and contrast that to the other guys in the cast shirts. He's one who won't stop trying, Nathan Massey. Testimonial season, that victory seems a long distant memory now. That victory over Huddersfield pre-season was uh, Nathan Massey's testimonial game. The boot is on the other foot tonight, 30 points to six. The scoreline, Huddersfield inflicted two pretty heavy defeats on Casford last season. 36-24, the day Ricky Latelli got a uh, hat-trick for the Giants. 36-10 in August, but Cas did get the victory in the repeat, in the return at the jungle. But there's no return for them here tonight by the look of things. Total domination from the Cats of the Tigers, but Chris Hill has lost the ball. Credit Jacob Miller goes up quick what are you doing, Chris? on Chris Hill and probably targets the ball more than the player. You can see he snatches it out of his hand. Chris Hill gets up. He doesn't like it, does it? Doesn't like the audacity of the number seven snatching the ball away. It stings that one though doesn't it Barry yeah. when you're in the middle and you're taking a hard carry and a half back comes out and you know, like you say it's not necessarily the biggest shot but he hits on ball and forces an error there and I think a little bit of a pride and ego hurt maybe more than anything else from Chris Hill there and the last thing you want when your pride and your ego is dented a little bit is people like Kenny Edwards reinforcing it with a bit of verbals a bit of a push and a shove that's why he's lost his temper So head and feet to the Castleford Tigers. Can they turn the tide here? Coming up to the hour mark. But they are a distant second in this contest. That's great line speed, isn't it? All those Giants defenders. Look at Nathan Pease there, the number nine in the shot. That's his 38th 
tackle. He's leading the line, working from marker, and then doing some damage when he's got the ball as well. Dan Smith, once of the Huddersfield Giants, making his first appearance this evening. Nathan Massey. No fluency from the Casper Tigers this evening. That try from Lawler, a distant memory now. The opening try of the game it was. Andy Last, who's taken over once again from Lee Radford, having filled in for him when he left Hull FC. Golding claims that ball. Edwards was challenging, and Ash Golding gets away from the first. Does well, gets over the 20-meter line. Good return. That's a great return from Ash Golding under pressure and avoids defenders. And look at them on the shift. Huddersfield Giants in confident mood near their own line. I spent some time with Ian Watson in the off-season and he absolutely hates it when people say that his sides are methodic and one-dimensional. His sides are ready to play when the time is right. The patience and the execution when the time is right is spot on. He's very methodical. I think he leaves no stone unturned. He, he doesn't give anything away. He, he's a little bit grumpy and a little bit nasty. I played with Watto at Witness. He was like that as a player, but as a coach, he's very clear in what he wants from those players. And once he gets that buy-in, once they start to deliver, then the scoreboard starts to tilt in his favour, as it has done tonight. Russell hoists the kick. Gary Gary is underneath it. And to be fair to Jason Gary Gary, they've they've had him in their sights all night. And I, I think there was one where he knocked it on, and even that was debatable. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'd be debating that one. I think we can give him a, a, a clean a clean go under the high ball so far. But I think what you've got to credit is. Huddersfield have got so much time on the ball. The kickers, Russell, Lola Heyer, they've got time to place that kick where they want to. I think what Gary Gary will be asking is for his players in the middle to put a little bit more pressure on that kick to make that, those catches a little bit easier, whereas he's having lots of pressure put under him every single time. Edwards playing the ball. St Helens, 12-4 up. Pretty attritional game at Lee Sports Village. But Leah on the scoreboard. That was a high tackle from Isan Masters. They needed that. On Alex they? Miller. Casper Tigers. I can't think of too many occasions where they've moved the ball deep in their own half. But Alex Miller, one of the leaders in this Casper Tigers team, is locked in in the centre, holds his hand up the centre and says, I got it wrong, lads. Here is Muzi Mustafa in his debut cast season having moved from uh, the Leeds Rhinos. Miller, Dan Smith, Broadbent, Greg Eden. Eden puts the brakes on, comes back in field, looking for an opening. And the referee's going to bring him back for obstruction, is he? Yeah, shame for Greg Eden. And he comes off that, that left foot on Mahe Fanua. I'm not sure what he's meant to do. He can't disappear can it yeah it's a tough call probably the right one but it seems harsh on Fanua and Cast Tigers I think they had an opportunity to get them earlier than that though I think timing and maybe a little bit too flat on that left edge there I think possibly the, the first pass out out to Greg Eden could have been a little bit better possibly straight to Fanua would have been better um, but yeah, unlucky there, there's not a lot you can do, uh, but shows that there's some opportunities there. I think Greg Eden's eager to have more hands on the ball, get some more opportunities. He's not had too many in the game so far. Into the final quarter of the game, Huddersfield in control. They've got uh, some big games coming up with the Giants. Wigan visit the John Smiths next, then Saints, and then they travel to the Salford Red Devils. That was a lovely weighted ball from Russell, wasn't it? Committed the defender and just placed it into the path. Hey, it was Josh Jones. That's you, ball carrier. Ball carrier. Jones struggling ball. to get to his feet. Nathan Peets it is. And Russell thought about it. Gets it away to Yates. But Yates. even the offload there, Bill. You've got your hands to a, ha to a half back. You've got to complete that tackle. Don't allow him to offload it. Russell, Tui Lola, hey, a quick hands from Eason Masters. Here's Kutcho, Kutcho bounces off, bounces.
match is over. And Leroy Kudjo, who set up a try for Isan Masters. Well, Masters returns the favour there. The pass from the new recruit, the Cook Island International. And Leroy Kudjo, second only to Earl Crabtree on the Giants' Super League appearance list, gets his first try of the season. Well, Leroy just brushes the defender aside. Again, Russell right at the heart of it. A nice line by Josh Jones, creates the space. And I I'm going to be kind here to cast Tigers. That's a tired defence. If I was being unkind, it's woeful defending there. And the fullback gets his body in front, but he's swatted off like a fly. Again, the little goose step, floated past by Lola here, and that's beautiful, Masters. 34 years old now, Leroy Kudjo. And nearing 350 Giants appearances. I said before, Bill, on the I, wing now. I said oh. before that sometimes experience can be another word for old. Well, the experienced players in the giant shirt, they don't look old one little bit, do they? They look smart, they look energetic and enthusiastic, and those fans appreciate what they've seen so far. It's a cold night, a bit tonight. There aren't many of them, but they're showing their appreciation. Oliver Russell, difficult conversion for him left-footed from the wrong side of the field and this to add to that try from Kutcho and across the face of the posts 34 points to six Huddersfield lead Barry there's a point you mentioned about Ollie Russell getting stood up in the tackle and them not completing it the reason why that's really important is he tips on gets the offload to Yates who cleans up gets a quick play of the ball and Ollie Russell's then really well placed to then attack back on that short hand side if they get that tackle in and control it and cover the ball that try is stopped there but really great play there awareness from Yates to get that quick play of the ball so that they can attack and score a fantastic try on that entry could you Golding up to the halfway line and appealing to the referee as he tries to get to his feet not getting any sympathy Huddersfield continuing their recent domination over the uh, Castleford Tigers they've had the edge in games against them in uh, recent years they've won four of five make it five from six by the end of this against Castleford since 2020 and they've generally won them pretty convincingly. Help! Here is Josh Jones. Again, as the season starts and Huddersfield look as though they've got potential, as they did last year, you'd hope that that would be reflected in people coming through the turnstiles to see what is shaping up to be an exciting side. Why would you not want to come and see the way that Huddersfield are playing, especially the attacking play that we're finally starting to see from them. We usually see the defensive efforts. Now we're seeing the attacking flair, scoring some fantastic tries, putting pressure on, bringing the intensity, bringing the warmth tonight, which we could all need. And yeah, I definitely would say that Huddersfield are proving the point that they should be getting more people down supporting this team. At a, a, a stadium that's, you know, if you're talking about the future of the game and what we're expected to look for well they've got a fantastic stadium a good setup as we've said without going off topic here Huddersfield is a big place Ken Davey would love to see more people support the rugby league team as many support the football team Huddersfield town seem to fill this stadium so you Giants fans bring a mate and then encourage them to bring a couple of mates too Castle for Tigers coming forward with Muzzy Mustafa oh, off the pass from no! Milner and uh, about 25 metres away here is Jacob Miller Miller on it goes to Widdup Widdup puts the brakes on and then runs into Miller and play Russell off, gets a hold of him but he gets the pass off to Lawler Held! Release Bartlett back to it here's Milner once more on the last and Miller kicks cross field towards Golding's wing and Golding makes that look kick. so simple. It's a dreadful kick. He has time to catch it. There isn't enough height on it. 
The kick chase is Zero. again Move. miles off. Oh, and we talk about rugby shield. league being a game of energy. The team with the most energy is the home side that look like they're looking forward to the final stages of this game. Ash Golding with one foot in, one foot out, knows that that's dead, and he can run it all the way to the 20 meter line and tap restart. Jacob Miller is a great player on his day, but he's had nothing to work from. And you have to say that the spine of Cast Tag has been outplayed by this spine and the Huddersfield Giants. Huddersfield. Three, move, left back. Oh, Looking for their second win of the season, on course for their second win of the season, their first home win of the season, this will be. Can he move? And hoping they can back it up in those big games to come. Price, Price for McQueen. McQueen on a hat-trick, McQueen's still going. And almost getting there. Hold it, hold it. Go. Nathan Peets. Russell, or Russell's ball landed for Tui Lolaheya. <laughs> Eastern Masters just manages to keep a hold of it. Still on the last, that's going to be the turnover in the end. But McQueen, so close to the hat trick try there. They're having fun, the Huddersfield Giants. I told you, they're looking forward. They don't want this game to end. There's a play on the right side with Will Price. Tantalizing defenders to come towards him, and he finds McQueen with a pass that sends him scything through the defence. When these play like that, you want the try to come, don't you? You want them to get the rewards for that amazing play there. The deception, I think, from Will Price has been outstanding today. He's such a good kicker of the ball, which means that the defence on that left edge have to push up, but then hold back in anticipation for that kick. And that little bit of hesitation in the defence is where he then finds that gap. And Chris McQueen's been playing off him so well today, hitting those really hard lines and just causing an absolute nightmare for the Castleford defence. Here is Massey. Five, find the floor. Go. Milner and Zoom. Miller. Tall, tall kick. And That's Lola a better Heia. kick. Lola Heia let it bounce. And Widdup almost got there. Widdup keeps it going, but he'd knocked it on. And Tui Lola Heia just almost paying the price for hesitation there, indecision. That's a better kick. And look at the urgency on Widdup. The not rugby league Nathan's ball bounces back. away from his hands, but he's in the frame, he's putting pressure. Wakefield will stay bottom. That's the uh, the good news for the Castleford Tigers. Well, Harry Newman making his comeback tonight, coming off the subs bench and getting a try. That's great news for the Leeds oh, Rhinos. That'll be a popular score Hold as well. I know the, the Rhinos fans think a lot about Harry Newman. Saints 12, 12 8 up. And Wakefield on course to being nilled for the third consecutive Super League game. Oh dear. Three, Jacob now! The Casper Tigers are in the same boat. Here is Matty English into the last 10 minutes. Great news that Harry Newman's back. I think one of the most exciting centre, well, players in the game at the moment. It's great news for English Rugby League. We want to see our young stars on the field showcasing what they can do. And he's had a tough time of injuries, hasn't he? Just really, really unlucky. So really great that he's coming back. Stay and fit, I, Harry. Yeah, stay fit. Stay fit, stay fit. And, uh, yeah, get some real consistency in games under his belt. Bill, we were at Warrington when he broke his leg that day. Can you remember during in the COVID games where there was nobody there, you could oh, hear the crowd. <laughs> you could hear the crack ringing round the stadium. He's got his way back. He's had a few hamstring back injuries. He's just that. It's highly tuned in his athletic state. That he's just trying to build that robust nature that a rugby league player needs to perform week in week out at that high intensity. Penalty for the uh, the ball steal from the Huddersfield Giants. One of them's guilty. What about this Castleford Tigers side then? I mean, Andy Last taking over, Lee Radford and the club parting company. They've got Leeds next up, and then they face Warrington, and then they've got to travel to the Catalan Dragons. There, there is a rebuild process, isn't there? But not to rebuild... Rebuild. In terms of bringing in players, they've got to rebuild their confidence. They look shattered. They've got the noisy neighbours in town. 
Yeah, next Thursday, game you can see on Sky Sports Arena, Sky Sports main event. They won't need motivation for that game, Bill. Let me tell you that. With up. Here is George Lawler. We can be critical of the Castleford attack, but I think Huddersfield have just stifled any attacking opportunities. They took all the space and time away. Rugby League is all about space and time, and at the minute, Huddersfield's taken it away. Little kick into space, and Tui Lola Hare gets there first. Lola Hare gets away from the chasing Castleford Tigers players. Cass on course for four defeats in a row at the start of the season for the first time since 2008. Meanwhile, Lee have taken the lead against Saints 14 12. Wow. Never right off the Leopards. Wow. Must have been Tapau. Zach Hardacre apparently involved with the try. Well built. Maybe the ball was like China in their hands. Oh, let it go. No, that's not that's... Tapau, that's a different thing of that. <laughs> they just needed to play with a bit of heart, oh. so all right, I've done now. No, what? I think you stopped. Oh, I've done. Wait here, wait here, wait here. Well, 14-12. Lee Leopards, they did it to Hull KR, didn't they? Snatched victory in that one. And Zach Hardacre with the try and his conversion has put them 14-12 up. Massey, here is Miller, here is Widdop. They really need this uh, new Widdop and Miller axis to, to fire, don't they? They pinned a lot of hope on that. Yeah. There's a bit of hope here in the finish. This is a good period for them. Can they, yeah, can they salvage a bit of pride? That's all they are playing for now. You want to finish the game, no matter what the scoreboard looks like. You want to finish it positive. Bibby was hunting the intercept there, and he just did enough. He's good at that, Jake, Bibby. He recognises where the ball is going to be. He knows that the fullback Jack Broadbent, is going to catch it. Just does enough to put him off. And the ball went forward from the 22-year-old Broadbent. Here is Golding, another former Leeds man. One, move! Hold to it, hold! Hold to it, hold! And wait, Will Price. What a player he could become. Well, he already he's, he's is. He's already a player, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. He's still learning his trade. He's, Surrender. he's underneath the best coach in Ian Watson, who thinks and understands the role of a halfback. And it was it was really interesting to me when Watto called him over and it's almost like he said, all right, I know you're having fun, just get back to the job and the way that you play that will benefit those around you. Broadbent goes back to retrieve the kick and Bibby leads the chasers for the Huddersfield Giants. I tell you what, if uh, Lee Leopards hold on to that 14-12 lead, there'll be some party there. I wonder if there's any of that champagne left from the first night. <laughs> there's none left of the one that he gave me. <gasps> Three. Move, Josh! Jack, hold that line! Go, he's moved to the side. Three. Here is Liam Watts. Amazing to think that in 2010, oh, Liam Watts won the uh, Go Albert Play Goldthorpe on, Rookie of the Year award. 13 years ago. Milner manages to go. Oh, gets the no! That, that sums up their performance yeah. tonight, doesn't it? It does, it does. And again, they're trying to finish the game in the right manner. Milner makes a half break. Everybody thinks the tackle is complete, especially Jacob Miller. And he commits the cardinal sin and takes his eyes off the ball. And listen, they're not going to sort this out during this game. It'll be hard work. It'll be honesty. It'll be accepting accountability. And Andy Last, as we saw, with his verbal and animated actions during half time, he's going to have some tough conversations with players. But the conversations will be much more pre pleasurable for the. Uh, mouth is just <laughs> pleasurable for the Huddersfield Giants. Started the evening in seventh. 
with one win to their name. Of course, they're a bit behind other teams having lost their first round game while Saints were on World Club Challenge duty in Australia. They're catching up and set to celebrate their first home win of the season and a convincing win as well. The player at acting half back there, Nathan Peets, he's been magnificent with the ball, but 51 tackles in this game. Price getting the ball back, he was trying to feed it through for McQueen, and the tackle count has been reset. Peets manages to get the pass away to Matty English now. And can Huddersfield round things off with another try to add to their tally? The ball back to Tui Lollahea. Lollahea's kick, Masters, oh, can't quite get there. And Jason Gary Gary, I think, denied him. Well done, the wingman. They're still knocking at the door, aren't they? They're not giving up Huddersfield, they're not happy. Just with the 34 points they've got on the board so far, they keep pushing, the line speed, their intensity, everything about what they're doing. He's spot on. Everything will be putting a smile on Ian Watson, Watson's go, face. Go, go, go. I'm sure of that. And then I sit there to, for the kickoff to not go the 10 and a penalty now to Huddersfield. Well, you can see why they've gone for it. They want possession back. They want to do something. At least throw a punch. At least throw a shot. And yet, I tell you what, word coming. We've got to get this confirmed. Word coming in from Lee. They've gone further ahead. A Shorrox try, I think it is. Well, what a stunner that would be. He's he's only been there two weeks. They've got to win, and he looks like they're on the way to the second. Final score, meanwhile, Hull KR losing at home for the second successive game. 10-18, the scoreline there. And 26-0 leads, heading for a convincing victory against Wakefield. And McQueen taking that ball. Lee, 20 points to 12 ahead. Shorrocks try converted, presumably by Hardacre. Well, what a stunning result that will be for the newly promoted Leopards. Here goes Lola Heyer across the field. Bibby, last minute of this contest, which apart from that early phase when Casava Tigers scored through George Lawler, has belonged to the Huddersfield Giants. They have dominated this game. High shots. What frustration from the rugged front rower. Ian Watson says take two. Ruthless, isn't it? Ruthless. And you can see Ian Watson recognises a rook player. He knows Nathan Peets. He's going to try to drag and create some space around the player, the ball. Liam Watts, he's not questioning the decision. He's questioning his night's work, his team's work. I think that's just a bit of frustration, isn't it? Coming yeah. out there, lack of focus and concentration. You just want to make the tackles. And if you're a Castleford player, you just probably want the game to end by this point. And once I'd imagine this ball slotted over, that'll be. Are you a backing brilliant... him, Jordy? I'm backing him, yeah. I think it's he's in got front this of the one. sticks, though. Well, yeah. <laughs> that's why I'm backing him. <laughs> you didn't him. open your mouth when it were on the sideline. <laughs> I'd let you make that one. <laughs> Russell, the final kick of the game. It's to add two more points to uh, Huddersfield Giants tally. It is a convincing first home win of the season for Ian Watson's men. Ken Davey, the veteran, chairman, benefactor, all round good guy, joins the celebrations. The Casavid Tigers will head home with their tails between their legs and the last first game in charge since taking over from Lee Radford leaving with plenty to think about. Two tries for Chris McQueen as the Huddersfield Giants wrap up a 36 points to six victory.